welcome to Instant Insights. At Global Data Thematic Intelligence, we track over 100 tech, industry, ESG and macro themes impacting all major sectors. I'm Romilly Leach and today I will be talking to Emma Sturdy, analyst in Global Data's Thematic Intelligence team, all about the future of healthcare. So we've already done an episode on our new series of Future of Reports, looking at the future of consumer with a focus on retail. In this instalment, we'll look at how technology will reshape the healthcare industry over the next decade. So Emma, last time we spoke, you were telling us all about service robots in restaurants. Will we be seeing them swap their aprons for scrubs in the future? <laughs> well, um, there are actually loads of uses for robotics in healthcare. Uh, we've got care robots, which would improve the quality of life for patients. So for example, helping care for elderly patients by getting them out of bed, dispensing medications and providing emotional support. There are also sanitation robots, which can clean and disinfect surfaces. This is particularly pertinent given the increasing number of antibiotic-resistant bacteria causing outbreaks of deadly infections. Perhaps most significantly, surgical robots can be used to increase surgical efficiency and outcomes. Robotic-assisted surgery allows for greater precision and can be less invasive. Um, so this reduces the risks of complications. So this almost sounds like it's pointing to some kind of dystopian future where all healthcare professionals, including surgeons, are replaced by machines. Is this what we might be seeing in 10 years? I mean, surgical robotics will certainly be widely adopted, especially for those surgical procedures that require extreme precision. But we definitely won't be seeing robots replacing surgeons. Um, using robots will require ethical considerations and regulations. As you can imagine, any potential malfunction could have really serious consequences for patient safety. Um, the greater risk to the patient, the more regulation is required. There's also, of course, the immense cost that comes with developing these robots. I mean, they are definitely gaining acceptance among surgeons. So in May this year, actually, 2024, uh, Kingston Hospital's assisted surgical robot had its first successful procedure. And if we look to the future beyond 2035, we might be seeing robots perform nanosurgery, where micro-robots can be used to operate on individual cells. Wow, that sounds really impressive. Are there any more technologies that could transform the healthcare sector in the next 10 years? Well, 3D printing has actually made some significant strides in the sector. Um, so current medical devices made using 3D printing include prosthetics, implants and surgical instruments, with um, dental applications being the first to receive medical approval. A key benefit to using 3D printing in medical fields is that devices can be personalised um, and this can happen on a large scale and at a lower cost than prosthetics made without 3D printing. In surgery, this would look like iterative changes being made to newly designed tools based on very immediate feedback from surgeons and medical professionals. To add on to this, 3D printed surgical models of a patient's specific anatomy can help surgeons plan complex procedures, ultimately reducing the amount of time patients spend in the operating room. Are there any more innovations that are even more futuristic than that? Um, yes, actually. So alongside personal prosthetics and surgical instruments, we could maybe see organs being 3D printed, which could really help um, alleviate the current organ donor crisis. So a 3D printed organ is a copy of a bodily tissue made by something called a 3D bioprinter and it's then printed with bio ink. 3D printed organs certainly sounds futuristic but surely there must be some challenges in the journey of 3D printed organs becoming widespread. Yeah I mean certainly it really is a very new development um, so achieving full functionality of the 3D printed organ remains difficult. Um, and as ever with innovations in the medical field, there are issues with regulation as well um, and with the regulatory landscape for clinical implementation still in question. And even if these problems were solved, there's also the problem that one type of organ successfully printed does not guarantee the success of another. You know, if you print a kidney, it doesn't mean you can then go on and print a heart. It's important to know um, that when one type of organ is printed and implanted, it does bring us slightly closer to printing another though. Um, so similarly, we've recently had some quite critical turning points in this development. In America, the University of Wisconsin-Madison developed a new method for printing functional brain tissue in May of this year. And in Feb, 
2024 this year, uh, researchers at the Vienna University of Technology made advances in generating tissue for, cre- for treating injured cartilage. In terms of the entire 3D printed organs field, there are really crucial milestones that create the foundations for making intricate tissue structures with 3D printers. Of course, 3D printed organs have those aforementioned challenges, but the field is moving in the right direction with these sorts of breakthroughs. Thanks very much, Emma. Um, I think that's all we have time for today, but that's a really great overview of what the future of healthcare is going to look like. So thank you for those instant insights. Thanks to everyone for listening, and from us at Thematic Intelligence, we'll see you next time. (music) Thank <music> you.